Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. One of the things that I lean on you for, John, is obscure investing ideas. And you have brought up port Portillo's. Am I saying that correctly? That's what you would think, but it's Portillo's. Portillo's. Okay. Portillo's. Tell me about Portillo's. What is this business and why are you excited about it? So Portillo's is a Chicago, it started in Chicago. It was a hot dog stand. So apparently there's a whole style of Chicago hot dogs. I didn't know that was a thing with grilled onions and peppers and they look really good. But that's how it got its start as just this hot dog stand turned into a full blown restaurant over time. Now there are 76 locations for Portillo's, mostly in the Midwest, but they are expanding into places like Arizona, Texas, Florida, just starting to get outside that core mark. But they have way more than hot dogs today, hamburgers, you have beef sandwiches, Italian beef sandwiches, milkshakes they're known for as well, some desserts. But it's just a restaurant, right? It's just a very popular restaurant in the Midwest, and it's starting to expand. So... What's interesting, I think, about this one is that the restaurant business is actually really attractive if you can do it well. The problem is that if is a really big if. Like you either become Chipotle and you can just repeat this thing over and over and over again. Or what is it like 80, 90 percent of restaurants die in their first year because yeah. it's a really hard business. Is the idea here that this is a, a concept that you can take from the locations that they're in now. I looked up the map and it looks like they're in the Illinois, Chicago area. We have a couple here in, I'm in the Minneapolis area, but there's only, I think three. So not exactly everywhere. And then there's huge swaths of the country where there's nothing like the entire West of the country. Yeah. Most of the population centers on the East coast, there's nothing. So a lot of potential growth opportunities is the idea that you take it from where it is now and 10x the number of locations, maybe even, I don't know if they franchise, maybe even start to franchise and leverage the business even more. Is that sort of the idea that you have this model that you can replicate and generate high margins over and over again? Yeah, basic. Yes, that's basically it in a nutshell. They are looking at 600 locations over the next 20 years. They do have the company owned model. So going from 76 to 600, not quite a 10x, but substantial growth plans. It will be a little bit slower because they're not leveraging the, the power of franchising, but that can be good as well. So long as the financials at the restaurant level support that decision of staying company owned. And I think they really do here. So the average unit volumes, this is one of the first things that I look at when I look at a restaurant stock, how much sales volume is a restaurant location making in a year and Chipotle has some of the best in the business. They're approaching 3 million per location. But Portillo's 8.7 million a year, average unit volume. So this is extremely high. Really? What? That's, is that higher than Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A is always a, one of the crazy high numbers. I'll have to look yeah, that up. Yeah, I believe it is. I believe Chick-fil-A is, a, off, going by memory, I believe Chick-fil-A is right around eight. So now Portillo's is not quite fast food. Right, they don't have a drive-through, okay. to my knowledge, uh, but they're not quite fancy dining either. It's pretty, it's pretty dog. casual kind of a restaurant. It's got in between, eight point seven million. That that's really high. W what you're not going to see because it is so small, there are bare minimum corporate expenses that you're going to have in a chain, and so as a percentage of revenue, those corporate expenses are high when you're a small chain like this. You fast forward when you have more restaurant locations, you're not going to have to the same degree, the incremental cost on the corporate level. So ideally, you're going to get operating leverage as you grow, as you scale. Now, at the restaurant level, EBITDA is 22%. That is, granted, it's an adjusted metric, but at the same time, if you're looking at other restaurants in the industry, 22% at the restaurant level is actually pretty good. So this is something that you can definitely see if they are disciplined, with their spending, if they continue to find an audience outside their core market, if they continue to expand, you can definitely see this being a, some, an investment that really does create a lot of shareholder value. There is promising signs. So they just opened up a location in Texas. This location in Texas, they were really not concerned, but this was a way out there outside of their core market, not even a whole lot of people who had moved from Chicago to this area. 
that restaurant location is on pace to do 17 million in its first year. Goodness. Now they don't expect to sustain that. That shows them, wow, we really have a concept here that travels. So the idea here is this becomes more something like a Buffalo Wild Wings, which is a phenomenal investment. Yeah. Chipotle, a phenomenal investment. There is a playbook here. What I like is that it's an identifiable product, right? Like hot dogs, Very it, so. that's our core. I, I keep thinking this is the business that Nathan should have been too. So yeah. Somebody's got to do it, right? Why not Portillo's? I Look, I need to dig into this more, but I love this idea, John. And only trading at about one-time sales. So you're not paying up. Yeah, love it.